In this comic book is a love story, a boy and girl in love. They get married, and after an offensively lurid description, illustrated, of course, of the couple's wedding night, the book shows how the bride murders her husband by chopping his head off with an ax. This comic book describes a sexual aberration so shocking that I couldn't mention even the scientific term on television. I think there ought to be a law against them. In the 1950s, the comic book industry had reached a crossroads. If you look at comic books in the golden age of comic books, the 1940s, you'll see the blossoming of superheroes. Captain America, Superman, they were fighting major foes as part of the war effort. The Cold War was a much trickier animal to follow. One of the trends that uh, was very successful in the early 50s was horror. I read a story about this baseball game and this man, he was losing his team for the pennant and he uh, uh, tried to uh, kill this guy, put some poison on his shoes and the team found out so they had a night game, and then they got this guy, and they killed him. And then they used his head for the ball, and they used his feet for the bat, and they used his insides for different bases. The sheer violence and gore of the new horror comics eventually drew the attention of the United States Senate. In 1954, they held hearings about comic books. My name is William Gaines. I was the first publisher in these United States to publish horror comics. I'm responsible. I started them. The Times were a little paranoid. Everyone was looking for communists under, the, uh, under their beds. Um, the Senate was very interested in maintaining a very you know, truth, justice in the American way, but they had their own point of view on this. And comics in particular were, uh, became a target. And look, comic books are pulpy fiction. It was very easy to find embarrassing moments because, of course, you didn't even have to read them. You just showed the pictures. Frederick Wortham put together a study of the ill effects of comic books and probably did himself the best possible self-promotion with the title, Seduction of the Innocent. Well, there it is right there. Wortham was a very interesting and actually kind of a liberal and progressive guy in a lot of ways. He ran community health clinics. Um, he worked in juvenile detention centers. He discovered, if it was that much of a discovery, that more than 90% of teenage juvenile delinquents read comics, and he started asking some very pointed questions of these kids. Uh, what attracts you to the comics? Um, how do you feel when you read these comics? He didn't bother to get a baseline study. Modern psychology, modern sociology, we'd have a control group. If he had had that, he would have realized that 90% of all teenage boys read comics, and not 90% of all teenage boys became juvenile delinquents. But that gave the Senate something really to tee off on. Senator Keith Valvo, what have you learned in, so far in your investigation on the subject of comic books? Uh, all of our testimony from psychiatrists and uh, children themselves uh, show that it's uh, very upsetting, that it has a bad moral effect, and that it is directly responsible for a substantial amount of juvenile delinquency and child crime. What emerged from the congressional hearings was the sense of, okay, look, they're out for a scalp. So let's head them off and basically self-regulate. The code that eventually developed restricted uh, publishers from using some of the traditional trappings of horror. Vampires, off limits. Wolfmen, off limits. Zombies, off limits. Ghouls, off limits. There was one immediate casualty to the industry's new self-regulation. EC Comics turned out to be the pinup child for the excesses of stories told with a twist with horrific detail. 
And once the Comics Code Authority standards were imposed, uh, they just couldn't deal with it. After a little bit, EC's publisher basically said, fine, I give up, and took the major property, Mad Magazine. Mad Magazine was originally a comic book, a satirical comic book, and said, I'm going this way. And so um, what EC did instead, MC Gaines did, is he crossed over to a magazine and made Mad a magazine. Basically unchanged, except for the page cut and the fact that it was in black and white, not color. Mad Magazine wasn't the only subversive influence from the 1950s to thrive in the 60s. If the people in Congress thought that they had solved the juvenile delinquency problem with the creation by the industry of the Comics Code Authority, right around the same time that they were holding their hearings, a young man named Elvis Presley stepped into the Sun Records studio and cut his first tracks. Rock and roll was just around the corner 